Act Four of the Tragedy of Macbeth by William Shakespeare. Act Four, Scene One, A Cavern in the Middle, a Boiling Cauldron, Thunder. Enter the Three Witches. Thrice the brinded cat hath mewed. Thrice and once the hedge pig whined. Harpier cries, "Tis time, tis time." Round about the cauldron go, in the poisoned entrails throw, toad that under cold stone. Days and nights has thirty-one, sweltered venom sleeping got. Boil thou first in the charm pot. Double, double, double toil and trouble, fire burn, and cauldron bubble. Fillet of a fenny snake in the cauldron boil and bake. Eye of newt and toe of frog, wool of bat and tongue of dog, adder's fork and blind worm's sting, lizard's leg and owlet's wing for a charm of powerful trouble like a hell-broth boil and bubble double double, double toil and trouble fire burn, burn and cauldron and bubble scale of dragon tooth of wolf which is mummy maw and goof of the raven salt sea shark root of hemlock dinged in the dark liver of blaspheming jew gall of goat and slips of you silvered in the moon's eclipse Nose of Turk and Tartar's lips, finger of birth strangled babe, ditch delivered by a drab, make the gruel thick and slab, add thereto a tiger's cauldron for the ingredients of our cauldron. Double, double toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble, cool it with a baboon's blood, then the charm is firm and good. Enter Hecate to the other three witches. Oh, well done i commend your pains and every one shall share in the gains and now about the cauldron sing like elves and fairies in a ring enchanting all that you put in music and a song black spirits etc hecate retires by the pricking of my thumbs something wicked this way comes Open locks, whoever knocks. Enter Macbeth. How now, you secret black and midnight hags? What is it you do? A, a deed without, without a name. name. I conjure you by that which you profess. Howe'er you come to know it, answer me. Though you untie the winds and let them fight against the churches, though the yesty waves confound and swallow navigation up, though bladed corn be lodged and trees blown down, though castles topple on their waters' heads, though palaces and pyramids do slope their heads to their foundations, though the treasure of nature's germans tumble all together, even till destruction sicken, answer me to what I ask you. Speak. Demand. Will answer. Say, if thou'st rather hear it from our mouths, or from our masters. Call em, let me see em. Poor in sow's blood, that hath eaten, her nine fair grease that's sweetened. From the murderer's gibbet throw into the flame. Come high or low, thyself and office deftly show. Thunder. First apparition, an armed head. Tell me, thou unknown power. He knows thy thought. Hear his speech, but say thou not. Macbeth. Macbeth, Macbeth, beware, Macduff, beware the thane of Fife, dismiss me, enough. Descends. Whatsoe'er thou art, for thy good caution, thanks, thou hast harped my fear aright, but one word more. He will not be commanded, here's another, more potent than the first. Thunder. Second apparition, a bloody child. Macbeth, Macbeth, Macbeth. Had I three ears, I'd hear thee. Be bloody, bold, and resolute. Laugh to scorn the power of man. For none of woman born shall harm Macbeth. Descends. Then live, Macduff. <laughs> what need I fear of thee? But yet I'll make assurance double sure, and take a bond of fate. 
Thou shalt not live, that I may tell pale-hearted fear it lies, and sleep in spite of thunder. Thunder. Third apparition. A child crowned with a tree in his hand. What is this that rises like the issue of a king, and wears upon his baby brow the round and top of sovereignty? Listen, but speak, speak not, not to it. Be lion metal proud and take no care. Who chafes, who frets, or where conspires are. Macbeth shall never vanquished be until great Burnham Wood to high Dusnane Hill shall come against him. Descends. That will never be. Who can impress the forest, bid the tree, unfix his earth-bound root? Sweet bodements, good! Rebellion's head, rise never till the wood of Burnham rise, and our high-placed Macbeth shall live the lease of nature, pay his breath to time immortal custom. Yet my heart throbs to know one thing. Tell me, if your art can tell so much, shall Banquo's issue ever reign in this kingdom? Seek to know no more. I will be satisfied. Deny me this, and an eternal curse fall on you. Let me know. Why sinks that cauldron? And what noise is this? Oh, boys. Show. 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 Show, Show his, his eyes and grieve his heart. heart. Come like, like shadows, so depart. depart. A show of eight kings, the last with a glass in his hand, ghost of Banquo following. Thou art too like the spirit of Banquo. Down! Thy crown to sear mine eyeballs, and thy hair, thou other gold-bound brow, is like the first. A third is like the former. Filthy hags! Why do you show me this? A fourth! Start eyes! What? Will the line stretch out to the crack of doom? Another yet! A seventh! I'll see no more! And yet the eighth appears, who bears a glass which shows me many more! And some I see that twofold balls and treble sceptres carry! Horrible sight! Now I see tis true, for the blood-boltered Banquo smiles upon me, and points at them for his! Apparitions vanish. What? Is this so? Ay, sir, all this is so. But why stands Macbeth thus amazedly? Come, sisters, cheer we up his sprites, and show the best of our delights. I'll charm the air to give a sound, while you perform your antic round, that this great king may kindly say our duties did his welcome pay. Music. The witches dance and then vanish with Hecate. Where are they? Gone? Let this pernicious hour stay I accused in the calendar. Come in, without there. Enter Lennox. What is your grace as well? Saw you the weird sisters? No, my lord. Came they not by you? No, indeed, my lord. Infected be the air whereon they ride, and damned all those that trust them. I did hear the galloping of horse. Who was it came by? Tis two or three, my lord, that bring your word. Macduff is fled to England. Fled to England? Ay, my good lord. Time, thou anticipatest my dread exploits. The flighty purpose never is o'ertook unless the deed go with it. From this moment the very firstlings of my heart shall be the firstlings of my hand. And even now, to crown my thoughts with axe, be it thought and done, the castle of Macduff I will surprise, seize upon Fife, give to the edge of the sword his wife, his babes, and all unfortunate souls that trace him in his line. No boasting like a fool, this deed I'll do before this purpose cool. But no more sights! Where are these gentlemen? Come, bring me where they are. Exeunt. Act Four, Scene Two. Fife. Macduff's castle. Enter Lady Macduff, her son, and Ross. What had he done to make him fly the land? You must have patience, madam. He had none. His flight was madness. When our actions do not, our fears do make us traitors. You know not whether it was his wisdom or his fear. Wisdom. 
to leave his wife to leave his babes his mansion and his titles in a place from whence himself does fly he loves us not he wants the natural touch for the poor wren the most diminutive of birds will fight her young ones in her nest against the owl all is the fear and nothing is the love as little as the wisdom where the flight so runs against all reason my dearest cousin i pray you school yourself but for your husband he is noble wise judicious and best knows the fits of the season i dare not speak much further but cruel are the times when we are traitors and do not know ourselves when we hold rumour from what we fear yet know not what we fear but float upon a wild and violent sea each way and move i take my leave of you shall not be long but i'll be here again things at the worst will cease or else climb upward to what they were before my pretty cousin blessing upon you fathered he is and yet he's fatherless i am so much a fool should i stay longer it would be my disgrace and your discomfort i take my leave at once exit sirrah your father's dead and what will you do now how will you live as birds do mother what with worms and flies with what i get i mean and so do they poor bird thou'lt never fear the net nor lime the pitchbone or the gin why should i mother poor birds they are not set for my father is not dead for all your saying yes he is dead how wilt thou do for a father nay how will you do for a husband why i can buy me twenty at any market then you'll buy him to sell again thou speak'st with all thy wit and yet if faith had wit enough for thee was my father a traitor mother ay that he was what is a traitor why one that swears and lies and be all traitors that do so every one that does so is a traitor and must be hanged and must they all be hanged that swear and lie every one who must hang them why the honest men then the liars and swearers are fools for there are liars and swearers enow to beat the honest men and hang up them now god help thee poor monkey but how wilt thou do for a father if he were dead you'll weep for him if you would not it were a good sign that i should quickly have a new father poor prattler how thou talkst enter a messenger bless you fair dame i am not to you known though in your state of honour i am perfect i doubt some danger does approach you nearly if you will take a homely man's advice be not found here hence with your little ones to fright you thus methinks i am too savage to do worse to you were fell cruelty which is too nigh your person heaven preserve you i dare abide no longer exit whither should i fly i have done no harm but i remember now i am in this earthly world where to do harm is often laudable to do good sometime accounted dangerous folly why then alas do i put up that womanly defence to say i have done no harm enter murderers what are these faces where's your husband i hope in no place so unsanctified where such as thou mayst find him he's a traitor thou liest thou shag-haired villain what you egg stabbing him young fry of treachery he has killed me mother run away i, I pray you dies exit lady macduff crying murder Exeunt murderers following her bring me where they are Exeunt. act four scene three england before the king's palace enter malcolm and macduff let us seek out some desolate shade and there weep our sad bosoms empty let us rather hold fast the mortal sword and like good men bestride our downfallen birthdom each new morn new widows howl new orphans cry new sorrows strike heaven on the face that it resounds as if it felt with scotland and yelled out like syllable of dolor what i believe i'll wail what no believe and what i can redress as i shall find the time to friend i will what you have spoke it may be so perchance this tyrant whose sole name blisters our tongues was once thought honest you have loved him well he hath not touched you yet i am young but something you may deserve of him through me and wisdom to offer up a weak poor innocent lamb to appease an angry god 
I am not treacherous. But Macbeth is. A good and virtuous nature may recoil in an imperial charge, but I shall crave your pardon. That which you are my thoughts cannot transpose. Angels are bright still, though the brightest fell. Though all things foul would wear the brows of grace, yet grace must still look so. I have lost my hopes. Perchance even there where I did find my doubts. Why in that rawness left you wife and child, those precious motives, those strong knots of love, without leave-taking? I pray you, let not my jealousies be your dishonours, but mine own safeties. You may be rightly just, whatever I shall think. Bleed, bleed, poor country, great tyranny. <laughs> Lay thou thy basis sure, for goodness dare not check thee. Wear thou thy wrongs. The title is afeard. Fare thee well, lord. I would not be the villain that thou think'st for the whole space that is in the tyrant's grasp, and the rich east to boot. Be not offended. I speak not as in absolute fear of you. I think our country sinks beneath the yoke. It weeps, it bleeds, and each new day a gash is added to her wounds. I think withal there would be hands uplifted in my right. And here from gracious England have I offer of goodly thousands. But for all this, when I shall tread upon the tyrant's head or wear it on my sword, Yet my poor country shall have more vices than it had before, more suffer, and more sundry ways than ever by him that shall succeed. What should he be? It is myself, I mean, in whom I know all the particulars of vice so grafted that when they shall be opened, black Macbeth will seem as pure as snow, and the poor state esteem him as a lamb being compared with my confineless harms. Not in the legions of horrid hell can come a devil more damned in evils to top Macbeth. I grant him bloody, luxurious, avaricious, false, deceitful, sudden, malicious, smacking up every sin that has a name. But there's no bottom, none, in my voluptuousness. Your wives, your daughters, your matrons and your maids could not fill up the cistern of my lust and my desire all continent impediments would o'erbear that did oppose my will. Better Macbeth than such an one to reign. Boundless intemperance in nature is a tyranny. It hath been the untimely emptying of the happy throne and fall of many kings. But fear not yet to take upon you what is yours. You may convey your pleasures in a spacious plenty, and yet seem cold. The time you may so hoodwink we have willing dames enough. There cannot be that vulture in you to devour so many as will to greatness dedicate themselves, finding it so inclined. With this there grows in my most ill-composed affection such a staunchless avarice that, were I king, I should cut off the nobles for their lands, desire his jewels and this other's house, and my more having would be as a sauce to make me hunger more, that I should forge quarrels unjust against the good and loyal, destroying them for wealth. This avarice sticks deeper, grows with more pernicious root than summer-seeming lust, and it hath been the sword of our slain kings. Yet do not fear. Scotland hath poisons to fill up your will of your mere own. All these are portable, with other graces weighed. But I have none, the king becoming graces as justice, verity, temperance, stableness, bounty, perseverance, mercy, lowliness, devotion, patience, courage, fortitude. I have no relish of them, but abound in the division of each several crime, acting it many ways. Nay, had I power, I should pour the sweet milk of concord into hell, uproar the universal peace, confound all unity on earth. O oh, Scotland, Scotland! If such a one be fit to govern, speak. I am as I have spoken. Fit to govern, no, not to live. O oh, nation miserable, 
with an untitled tyrant bloody sceptred when shalt thou see thy wholesome days again since that the truest issue of thy throne by his own interdiction stands accursed and does blaspheme his breed the royal father was a most sainted king the queen that bore thee oftener upon her knees than on her feet died every day she lived fare thee well these evils thou repeat'st upon thyself have banished me from scotland o oh, my breast thy hope ends here macduff this noble passion child of integrity hath from my soul wiped the black scruples reconciled my thoughts to thy good truth and honour devilish macbeth by many of these trains hath sought to win me into his power and modest wisdom plucks me from over credulous haste but god above deal between thee and me for even now i put myself to thy direction and unspeak mine own detraction here abjure the taints and blames i laid upon myself for strangers to my nature i am yet unknown to woman never was forsworn scarcely have coveted what was mine own at no time broke my faith would not betray the devil to his fellow and delight no less in truth than life my first false speaking was this upon myself what i am truly is thine and my poor country's to command whither indeed before thy here approach old seaward with ten thousand warlike men already at a point were setting forth now will together and the chance of goodness be like our warranted quarrel why are you silent such welcome and unwelcome things at once tis hard to reconcile enter a doctor well more anon comes the king forth i pray you ay sir there are a crew of wretched souls that stay his cure their malady convinces the great assay of art but at his touch such sanctity hath heaven given his hand they presently amend i thank you doctor exit doctor what's the disease he means tis called the evil a most miraculous work in this good king which often since my here remain in england i have seen him do how he solicits heaven himself best knows but strangely visited people all swoln and ulcerous pitiful to the eye the mere despair of surgery he cures hanging a golden stamp about their necks put on with holy prayers and tis spoken to the succeeding royalty he leaves the healing benediction with this strange virtue he hath a heavenly gift of prophecy and sundry blessings hang about his throne that speak him full of grace enter ross see who comes here my countryman but yet i know him not my ever gentle cousin welcome hither i know him now good god betimes remove the means that makes us strangers sir amen stand scotland where it did alas poor country almost afraid to know itself it cannot be called our mother but our grave where nothing but who knows nothing is once seen to smile where sighs and groans and shrieks that rend the air are made not marked where violent sorrow seems a modern ecstasy the dead man's knell is there scarce asked for who and good men's lives expire before the flowers in their caps dying or ere they sicken oh relation too nice and yet too true what's the newest grief that of an hour's age doth hiss the speaker each minute teems a new one how does my wife why well and all my children well too the tyrant has not battered at their peace no they were well at peace when i did leave em but not a niggard of your speech how ghost when i came hither to transport the tidings which i have heavily borne there ran a rumour of many worthy fellows that were out which was to my belief witnessed the rather for that i saw the tyrant's power afoot 
Now is the time of help. Your eye in Scotland would create soldiers, make our women fight to doff their dire distresses. Be it their comfort, we are coming thither. Gracious England hath lent us good seaward and ten thousand men, an older and a better soldier, none that Christendom gives out. Would I could answer this comfort with the like. But I have words that would be howled out in the desert air, where hearing should not latch them. What concern they? the general cause or is it a fee grief due to some single breast no mind that's honest but in it shares some woe though the main part pertains to you alone if it be mine keep it not from me quickly let me have it let not your ears despise my tongue for ever which shall possess them with the heaviest sound that ever yet they heard hum i guess at it your castle is surprised your wife and babe savagely slaughtered, to relate the manner were on the quarry of these murdered deer to add the death of you. Merciful heaven! What man? Ne'er pull your hat upon your brows. Give sorrow words. The grief that does not speak whispers the o'erfraught heart and bids it break. My children, too? Wife, children, servants, all that could be found. And I must be from thence. My wife killed too i have said be comforted let us make medicines of our great revenge to cure this deadly grief he has no children all my pretty ones did you say all oh hellkite all what all my pretty chickens are there dam at one fell swoop dispute it like a man i shall do so but I must also feel it as a man. I cannot but remember such things were that were most precious to me. Did heaven look on, and would not take their part? O oh, sinful Macduff, they were all struck for thee. Not that I am, not for their own demerits, but for mine, fell slaughter on their souls. Heaven rest them now. Be this the whetstone of your sword, let grief convert to anger blunt not the heart enrage it oh i could play the woman with mine eyes and braggart with my tongue but gentle heavens cut short all intermission front to front bring thou this fiend of scotland and myself within my sword's length set him if he escape heaven forgive him too this tune goes manly Come, we go to the king. Our power is ready. Our lack is nothing but our leave. Macbeth is ripe for shaking, and the powers above put on their instruments. Receive what cheer ye may. The night is long that never finds the day. Exeunt. End of Act Four of The Tragedy of Macbeth by William Shakespeare.